Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment, and today I'm showing you guys the 25 meter Army Zero. Some of you guys have been asking for this. Um, I'm not at all going to tell you this is necessarily the best Zero for you. It's one of many different flavors of Zeros that are out there for the AR-15 family. Um, kind of requires a little bit of explanation, which is that it's a battle Zero. So what that means is you just get your front and rear side, everything is set to a, to a known distance, to a specified distance. And the dude with the rifle, he's on the battlefield, and he sees something at 50 meters. He holds the same, shoots at it, he makes that target. He sees an enemy at 300 meters. He holds the same, he shoots, he hits the target. All right, a battle zero is not precision work, okay? This is not hitting nickels and dimes at any distance you want. All right, the battle zero concept is you zero your rifle at a specified distance, and what happens is the bullet goes up, it ladders up over your sight line, and then it comes back down. All right, so you still have a usable space. I'm gonna try to roll in some graphics here, but you, you have a usable combat effective zone of where your rounds are generally gonna hit. All right, so the Army, uh, we use 25 meter. Every, no matter where you are on Earth, every, Generally, every army location or OP or FOP or garrison is going to have at least a 25 meter range. So it makes it convenient that way. I'm not sure if 25 meter zero was chosen for that reason or the 25 meter zero was chosen and every range in the army became 25 meters at least. Um, but either way, this is how it's done for those who want to know and for those who are interested. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, so we got some uh, pieces of equipment here that are going to be relevant to getting this done, at least in the Army way. So first of all, I have uh, one of my ARs here. I set it up as close as I could legally, reasonably get to an M4A1, the same ones that we have. Um, and basically, it's a 14 and a half inch barrel of actual barrel. Now, it's pinned and welded with an A2 extended birdcage. Uh, to make it ATF legal to be 16 inches plus, but the actual rifling and bore that's doing the work ballistically is a 14 and a half inch barrel. All right, moving on. This is your Matek or Matek rear sight. Okay, and you're gonna have different graduations on this side. Now we talked about the battle zero concept, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just leave it there for now. But this is the standard rear sight that we use on our M4s, uh, at least in the Army. And um, now, last piece of the puzzle is I'm just using that good old green tip. Uh, green tip deserves a video on its own. Not my favorite 5.56 five, load uh, at all, but it's, it's here. And for many years, this is how it was done uh, when I went through infantry OSUT uh, basic. Uh, this is how we did it, green tip. And these days we're using M855 Alpha 1. They call it brown tip. It's got a silver tip. It's a whole different bullet construction and powder and all that. But this right here, the 62 grain green tip, everything, our ACOGs with the BDC in there, uh, the Matek rear sight, everything was designed to be functional with this round. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, probably deserves its own video. You guys let me know if you want kind of a video going into the weeds about green tip. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this zeroed and I'm gonna show you the target. All right guys, so here is your standard target. You guys can download and print them out. Just search for a 25 meter zero target. Um, the actual thing is a piece of cardstock, the same size, it's tougher paper. And on the back side, it has for the M16 A2 or A4, which it looks the same, it just has different number values, different size grid. But uh, we're using the M4 carbine side because we have a 14 and a half inch barrel. And if you have a 16.1 inch barrel, which probably most of you have, uh, this is still gonna work. So this is basically a worksheet that is, is a self-correcting, self-help kind of thing. So wherever our three shot group is gonna land, okay, let's say it landed here. I need to move my rear sight this direction and I need to do it, it says 15 clicks. So if I move my rear sight clockwise and I do it 15 clicks, it should in theory get me in the center. All right, and if I landed this high, I need to move my front sight counterclockwise and I need to do it, it's saying uh, six clicks down. Six clicks counterclockwise. 
is how this target works uh, if you're going to use it. So these are suggested number values. Um, you're going to see why because it may not be totally exact. Maybe I needed to go clockwise on my rear sight instead of 12. Maybe I did 12, but it only got me this far. All right, so different manufacturers of different components on the AR-15, all kinds of stuff out there. You're just going to have to try it. So you'll see how it works, but for the first iteration, we'll use the numbers, and after that, we'll have enough data to do it on our own. End result is we want everything to be landing, preferably in the center of this white circle. All right, so just hold the same every time, and we're going to do a three-shot group. And we do a three-shot group because it makes a triangle. Five-shot group is my preferred, but at least the Army way, three shots, saves rounds, gives you a general, hopefully a decent idea of the center of your group. Now, I've placed this thing at, it's a little bit past 25 yards because it's a 25-meter zero, which is about 27 and change. So there's the firing line. I know the lighting is kind of weird right now. All right, so we're at about 27 yards, which would make 25 meters. And getting 25 meters right is exactly important. Getting it exact is important, okay, for this type of zero. All right, so the only thing you really have to do to get set up if you're using the Maytek rear sight, and hopefully we can get the focus here. All right, we're going to want to set it on the 300. Okay, so you're going to notice this bar below the 300. We would set it on that if we had an M16 or a 20-inch barrel. Uh, probably an 18-inch barrel, you could get away with it. But we're going to set it on 300. Why 300 when we're getting 25 meters? Uh, and again, that's why 25 meters exact, exact as you can be, matters here. Uh, because what happens is the round, your sight line and your round are going to meet up exactly at 25 meters. And what's going to happen now is past 25 meters, that round, the bullet is going higher than the sight line. Because when you're aiming down the sights, there is no gravity or, or stuff. It's just a straight laser line, whatever you're aiming at. But of course, your bullet, it's affected by gravity and external ballistics and everything else that's going on. All right, so at 25 meters, if you have zeroed your rifle for that bullet to be impacting the sight line to meet up with it, all right, at 25 meters past 25 meters your bullet goes over the sight line it starts to ladder up right around about 200 ish meters is when the bullet has reached its maximum ordinate its highest arc and then it starts coming back down all right and now it starts coming back down so by the time you reach about approximately 300 meters the bullet has now come back down and met you again at your original sight line that was working for 25 meters if that makes sense and hopefully the graphics i'm rolling in here are going to be helpful um, but that's why you set if you're using this style of rear sight you set it to 300. all right guys so you want to try to get as steady as possible um, i'm just going to do it don't really have all my stuff uh, quite yet so I'm just going to be using the magazine kind of as a monopod, use the range bag a little bit. Um, typically this would be done in full kit from the prone with supported sandbag. Um, but I'm just going to do it off the bench seated and see what happens. So here we go. And another thing is you want to have your butt stock as long as you can get it. Okay. Get a nice length of pole for what you need. All right, let's go check it out. All right, guys, so this is what happened. Uh, looks like I had a bit of a flyer down here that might have been my first shot. So I suspect my group is realistically probably right about here. All right, so in terms of let's do windage first. So we need to move to get more this way. It's telling us on this half of the sheet that our rear sight needs to go counterclockwise. Okay, and how many clicks do we need to do that? Well, let's see, we got this up here, moving down. It's about, 
between three and six. So I'm gonna say, let's, let's just follow it, let's do five. All right, so I'm gonna write that down over here for our first set of adjustments. We're going five left. All right, and then in terms of height, looks like we're not too far off, but let's see what we need to do. So if I'm gonna guess my center of my reel group is right about here, probably need to do one click, but I'm actually gonna up that to two. Uh, rule of thumb here is anytime you're doing this, it's okay to over adjust rather than under adjust because I wanna get a little, I wanna get as further away from my original group so I know where I hit, but I circled it. So either way, we're gonna be all right, but I'm gonna say two clicks up. So we're gonna notate that here. All right, so we need to go five left and two up, and that's the first adjustment we're gonna make. All right, guys, so your sights are gonna be marked for right, and they're gonna be marked for up and uh, for the elevation. But for the windage here on your rear sight, whether it's a, a Maytech unit or some other kind of unit, you're gonna see an arrow typically going clockwise, and it says R. And the best way to remember is uh, basically it's speaking to you, all right? And it's telling you, hey, if you turn me clockwise, if you turn me that direction, I am moving your bullets to the right. All right, same thing for the front sight post. And let's grab that up. All right, and it says up going left. All right, so if you turn me to the left, I am moving your bullets up is what it's saying. All right, so what we needed to do was five left. All right, so to make it go left, we gotta go opposite. All right, so. One, two, three, four, five. We just went five left or five counterclockwise. So now we had to go two up. So we're gonna follow the direction of the arrow. It wants us to go clockwise to make the bullets go up is the best way I remember it. Okay, so you can use a front side adjustment tool. Mine, one of the prongs broke off. Sorry for the focus problems here. Uh, or you can use the tip of a round. And the way that would work is you would push in this detent and then move over your sight and just do it one click at a time. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this because I have it. And we're supposed to move two up. All right, that's one, that's two. And let's get it locked in place. All right, make sure your detent is locked in place before you call it good. All right, so we did two up. We did five left, let's see what happens. All right guys, so for the first iteration, the adjustments I just made, I used, generally used the recommendations that the chart was telling me. Um, but once we have a second shot group, it's gonna look a little better or a little bit closer uh, to where we want it to go. But after we have the second shot group, we're actually gonna have real data about this rifle in these sites as to what it actually needs to move what known distance across the paper. Okay, so really you use those numbers on the edges for the X and Y values. You use those numbers initially, but after you have your second shot group, now you know what's going on with your site. Maybe it told you to do 12 clicks. You did your 12, but really you probably should have done 15 to really get there. Okay, so now you have data about your individual rear sight, and now you know that every single click that it says on the paper is not necessarily gonna be accurate for your rear sight, all right? There's, there's a lot of nuances and variants in equipment and how things were produced by different government manufacturers and, and manufacturers and whatnot, all right? So it's kind of you, every rifle's an individual is what I'm trying to say. All right, let's go check it out. All right, so this is what we got for our second shot group right here. Okay, so that's, uh, it's not looking so hot. I'm out of practice with iron sights. Uh, more excuses, let me find some. Uh, green tip, there we go. All right, so this is what we got. If I had to make some kind of guess, probably the center of our group is right here. So I'm gonna say Let's go ahead and set this up. I like having the track record, by the way, so you can kind of remember 
how many adjustments it took to do what for your rifle. Okay, so now let's do windage first. So windage, I'm gonna come, if, it, if, that's, if I'm saying that this is now the center of my group and this was the original, pretty much to move about two and a half boxes, that took me five. Okay, so I'm actually gonna come back, let's say three. So now we're gonna go three clicks to the right and then elevation, I'm gonna bring it down one because we did two last time. So there's one and now we're going down. Okay, so let's give it a try. Three right, one down. All right guys, so I made that second round of adjustments, three right, one down. And now I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my third group. Hopefully everything is gonna work out by the time we hit the third group. All right, let's go check it out. Okay. So here's what we got. This is horrible. You guys get to see how I'm shooting right now. So there's one and there's two and I did feel a flyer. So I am okay knowing that that's a flyer. I'm hoping that my shots would be here um, if I had done my part, all three shots. So in this case, what you can do is I'm gonna mark off those three hits and I'm gonna go ahead and reshoot a uh, three shot group and see what happens just to see if I like it. Alright guys so here is that last group and this is iteration number four. I didn't make any changes between three and four. So we have one hole right here. Looks like one hole right here. And we have one hole right here. All right, so this is kind of the triangle that we got going on. And the center of that group should be here. So at this point, you could reshoot and try again. You know, maybe just to be safe, I could do one more click up just to be safe. Um, I could try the practice so I don't suck as much right now. Um, but I am already holding, if you guys saw my, my revisiting co-witness video, I am kind of holding low to begin with on purpose. I like a six o'clock hold. That's where the front sight base or the front sight is going. So I think I'm gonna calm it down on raising elevation anymore. And I'm gonna consider this uh, at least good enough all right guys, so you guys saw pretty down and dirty, 25 meters zero. Um, definitely need to practice some more, you guys can tell, okay? You can tell me that, it's okay, I suck right now. Um, been away from iron sights on a rifle for a little bit, so you can just give me some room. I don't give myself room though, I'll be out here practicing more. So now, uh, the best thing that you can and should do if you have a range that allows it is now you confirm your distance, uh, you confirm your zero at known distance. Okay, so in this case, if we had 300 meters, we could measure out 300 meters. Um, I would like to test it at 300 meters just to check it out and see how we're doing. It may require a little bit of fine tuning because that, I mean, 25 meters, zeroing your rifle that close, that's a very close distance. Okay, your bullet's gonna go all the way up and it's gonna come all the way back down. And hopefully, in theory, with green tip using these sights and everything, this combination, you're going to come all the way above the sight line after 25 meters. And it's going to come back down and right around, hopefully, about 300, that bullet is going to come back down and meet you at your sight line. But you're not going to know that unless you fully test it out with an actual confer known distance con confirmation of your zero. All right, so the range I'm at right now doesn't allow for that doesn't have enough distance for that. I could confirm at 200, um, but I think for just general use today, um, I think this is gonna do. I think what really needs to happen is there's no equipment I can buy. There's no 
um, cool guy tricks or anything. What really needs to happen is I just need to practice more. And uh, I think a lot of guys mess up, but they want the coolest gear. They want, you know, they think that money can can make up for the fact that, you know, they suck. Um, so iron sights is really where you figure out where your fundamentals are at. Yeah, not the best rest, and there's a bunch of excuses. Mill contract, green tip ammo, I got it. Um, just takes more time, but at least I'm happy with where the rifle is generally shooting right now. Okay, so last thing I'm going to leave you with is a tip. Um, in this case, I'm using iron sights as my backup sighting system uh, for this AR. So what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to go ahead and fold the rear sight down, bust out my red dot. This is a COP ML3. Uh, taking this to Afghan and Iraq, so it's kind of cool to be on my AR. So now I spoke too soon on that. So a tip that you can use is you, now you have something on your iron sights that at least you can trust, all right? Hopefully you've confirmed it at distance and you're happy with your iron sight zero. So now what you can do is you can open up your red dot, turn it on, all right? And you can actually save yourself some time and save yourself some rounds by adjusting your, your red dot to match up with what the iron sights are doing. Okay, so that's a, that's a way to kind of get closer and get faster there without expending as much ammo and taking as much time is if you, if you adjust your red dot from the start so it's already lined up with what your iron sights were achieving. And then you flip the rear sight down and you go for a zero on your red dot. And you'll find to be, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close. You're just going to have to fine tune it at that point. So that's just a method, a, a little tip there if you want to use it. But anyway, this, this is a basic demonstration of how you do the 25 meter zero using the right barrel length, the right rear sight, the right or wrong ammo, and the correct target that's going to help you get there, that self-help target. Okay, so thanks for watching and comment for questions. Thanks.